Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Director Ray, you articulated in your opening statement that perhaps the top concern in our country right now is the prevalence of violence and violent crime in our communities, and I, I think we all agree with that. One of the other serious concerns we have is the decreasing amount of faith that many Americans have in our institutions. And uh, among the most important of our institutions in America, of course, is our system of justice. And over the past few years, millions of Americans have begun to question whether we can still rely upon the maximum of equal justice under law and whether justice is blind and all the rest. One of the reasons for this is the very real perception that some individuals within the DOJ and FBI have abused their authority and engaged in selective enforcement of certain statutes. One example that comes to mind is the Foreign Agents Registration Act. So I wanted to ask you if you're aware that during Special Counselor Mueller's probe, there were at least five indictments of conservatives under FARA. And, and if you know how that compares to the prevalence of previous FARA prosecutions since the enactment of that statute more than 80 years ago? I'm probably not the right person to uh, provide a whole lot of information about Special Counsel Mueller's investigation. I'd rather, that's probably better referred to what's left of, of that office, I suppose. But uh, certainly FARA that you're referring to uh, is an extremely important tool uh, that we in the FBI have been pushing for a while to be using more aggressively, uh, in particular against the, the Chinese threat, because so much of it is reflected through people engaged in activity uh, that we think could appropriately be pursued under FARA. So exactly how it compares, I'm not sure I have that information. Well, here's the, here's the point. We agree with that, and I think we need to be aggressive against the CCP for sure. We're all on the same page there. But according to reports, there were as many FARA prosecutions during the previous 40 years as there were during the 18 months of the Mueller probe. The, the, George Papadopoulos, for example, stated that he was given the choice to either, quote, accept the charge that I lied or face FARA charges. And that while FARA has been widely ignored for years, the special counsel's office has dusted the statute off as a prime weapon to get members of the Trump circle to talk, right, unquote. Um, the FBI and the Justice Department used FARA throughout their investigation into Lieutenant General Michael Flynn, but nothing ever came from those charges. Uh, the Justice Department stated in its motion to dismiss the case that the FBI's closing communication, quote, made clear that the FBI had found no basis to predicate further investigative efforts into whether Mr. Flynn was being directed and controlled by a foreign power, Russia in that case, in a manner that threatened U.S. national security or violated FARA or its related statutes, unquote. So the question is, it, it, it seems to a lot of Americans that alleged FARA violations were used as either a pretext to investigate those with ties to President Trump or that FARA charges were used to pressure those conservatives in a bid to find a connection between the Trump campaign and Russia. So regardless of the details of the Mueller probe, I get that you're not the, the expert on that. The question is, how could anyone see this otherwise? Doesn't it look like that was selective enforcement? I certainly understand the, the purpose of the question, the point of the question. I, I'm not sure that I can really speak to what people would perceive. Mm -hmm. um, what I can say is that, again, separate from the special counsel's investigation, which is really, if, respectfully, probably not my place to comment on, uh, I do think that more aggressive use of the Foreign Agents Registration Act uh, is something that former Attorney General Barr and I, for example, discussed quite a bit and trying to use it more aggressively than it had been used in the past, partly for the reason we've already talked about. On June 3rd of this year, Politico reported that the Justice Department is now investigating a Democrat lobbying firm for failing to comply with FARA and its representation of Burisma Holdings while Hunter Biden served on its board. And up until about a week ago, this, this, uh, when this news was first reported, there was a, a very real perception that enhanced enforcement is being used only against Republicans and conservatives. So the question is, can you confirm the FBI's commitment to fervently pursue these violations, as you said, more aggressively, but to do it regardless of the political party affiliations of the subject of the investigation? I think political party affiliations should have zero place in our decision to enforce the Foreign Agents Registration Act or any other statute. Um, and you can be sure that as long as I have anything to say about it, we're going to enforce it in an even-handed way uh, without respect to anybody's political affiliation. I got 19 seconds left. I'll just say that even hand in this perception that we're talking about is increasingly important in our republic because if people can't, if they don't have faith in a system of justice, if they think that Lady Justice is a symbol 
has the blindfold up and she's peering beneath it, then we lose a, an important element that holds the republic together. I'm out of time. I yield back. Thank you for your time. Gentleman yields, gentleman yields back. Republican lawmakers railed against FBI Director Christopher Wray about the department's unequal treatment of conservatives. Take a listen to this exchange between Louisiana Congressman Mike Johnson and the director. According to reports, there were as many FARA prosecutions during the previous 40 years as there were during the 18 months of the Mueller probe. Can you confirm the FBI's commitment to fervently pursue these violations, as you said, more aggressively, but to do it regardless of the political party affiliations of the subject of the investigation? I think political party affiliations should have zero place in our decision to enforce the Foreign Agents Registration Act or any other statute. Um, and you can be sure that as long as I have anything to say about it, we're going to enforce it in an even-handed way uh, without respect to anybody's political affiliation. All right. Joining us now is retired Navy SEAL and former FBI agent Jonathan Gillum. Jonathan is also the author of Sheep No More series. Also with us is former U.S. Attorney and Executive Director of Right on Crime, Brett Tolman. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Good to be Thanks here. Thanks for having us. Hey, Jonathan, I want to start with you. Do you believe Director Ray? Do you think that he, you know, he may mean it, but do you think in practice it'll play out that there will be parity or that politics won't have a role in, in this anymore? No, I mean, absolutely not. Christopher Ray was flat out lying right there. And the, and the fact is, uh, he is an incompetent director. He was not qualified for this job. I think, I'm you know, a huge Trump supporter, but I think it was one of the biggest mistakes uh, of the Trump presidency was putting Christopher Ray in there. And uh, I think he showed it, especially in this, his opening remarks that he made today, how biased he actually is. Because everything that he said, especially about extremist violence, was completely sided to the left. Everything that had to do with any type of group that calls themselves patriots or anything that happened on January 6th was noted and, and displayed by his language as something that is far extreme with very little, if any, people that were there that, to be peaceful. And he made it sound as though the left is mostly peaceful with just a few things. Everything that comes out of this guy's mouth is pushed to the left, but it's subtle. So if you've been you know, a prosecutor or a, a U.S. attorney or if you've been in the FBI and you listen to his language, you can literally see this. And I, and I think some of these congressmen and congresswomen actually saw this today and I think they went after him, but he's not going to bend as far as that goes. Brett, Brett, you've been at these high levels. Do you think that that's an accurate description of both the director and also the senior folks within the FBI? Hey, Sean, Lindsay, thanks for having me on. I will tell you that I have spoken directly to FBI agents that are investigating January 6th, you know, um, issues. And ranging from individuals that uh, were in the Capitol to individuals who were not in the Capitol. One, one thing that stands out, the, the, the most recent conversation I had with an FBI, FBI agent here in Salt Lake indicated he said he's never seen anything like this. They are given a mandate. They are to go out. They have been given the questions they're supposed to be asking. They have been given the way they're supposed to proceed on this case. They don't have individualized authority. It is all coming from Washington, D.C. I've spoken to prosecutors that are prosecuting these cases. And this is not individualized justice. They are lumping everybody into the same category and they are treating them uh, like, unlike I've ever seen in a case. Uh, the Department of Justice is supposed to address every single case, unless it's a conspiracy case, according to the criminal conduct of that individual. They're not doing that. None of the prosecutors mm -hmm. have authority. It's all coming straight from Washington, D.C. Wow. Well, this is what FBI Director Ray had to say about the Capitol riots on January 6th. Quote, we are treating it as an act of domestic terrorism and investigating it through our Joint Terrorism Task Force. The interesting thing here, Jonathan, there is a disparity in the way that, as we're talking about, the Capitol rioters were treated when you compare that to, per se, how Antifa was treated last summer. Now, granted, people who did wrong should be held accountable. But as we're discussing here, there is so much energy put towards these people people, and there's not the same energy put towards Antifa. Why didn't he explain that? Why couldn't he explain that? Well, I don't think he could explain it because, again, he was making this into uh, more of a political uh, stand. And, you know, he, he said there were three categories of people on January 6th. He failed to completely mention the people 
who were literally invited into uh, the Capitol building by the, the Capitol Police. And the majority of the people that were there did nothing. It, he made it sound as though if you came on the Capitol grounds, you were an extremist. And that is just not the case. There were some violent people there. There were some people that went into the Capitol that did some very nefarious things. But his category, uh, the way he categorized these people was absolutely wrong. And the way that the FBI has systematically, as uh, Brett just uh, pointed out there, been told how to investigate January 6th, they've systematically been kept from truly investigating or going after the leftists. And that is so clear because of the way that there's just nothing going down about these individuals on the left. And I'll, I'll just say one other thing. In all my time in the FBI, the only white supremacist case that I ever saw, and I was in New York the entire time, was prison related. There was no white supremacy, uh, massive uh, agenda going on in the United States, and it's not happening now. And it's another example of how they use these things and push them out in the media. Yeah. Well, Brett, when you think about what Antifa did last summer, the number of federal properties that they destroyed um, or defaced, and the money that they caused to small businesses, the, the, the police officers who they injured, the Secret Service members, they really haven't been held accountable to the same type of behavior that they did all last summer. Why not? They have not been. I mean, you think about what domestic terrorism is. When you burn down a police station and you take over city blocks, that's domestic terrorism. And they have not been held accountable. Uh, I'm ashamed to, to say that, you know, my, my former office, you know, the Department of Justice, I, I wish I could see courage. I wish I, I could see U.S. attorneys standing up and hel holding these folks Brett, accountable. Brett, can I ask you a quick question? I don't mean to interrupt, but I want to ask you a question. Yeah. In the January 6th incident on the Capitol, right, they're, they, they're doing all this video stuff. They're finding their faces, and they're going out and saying, okay, we've got this individual in the Capitol, so we're going to go after him. To Lindsay's point, this is, we, all of that stuff that was, it happened not just in Washington, D.C., but throughout the country, we've got video. Why aren't people saying, here's the individual, I can identify them, and now they can be prosecuted because we've got them holding something or smashing something? Yeah, I, you know, it's interesting. I, I represent an individual who um, went into the Capitol, um, was told she could go in, and was actually pointed by a security guard to the direction she should go. And she's being prosecuted. She's being charged with uh, misdemeanors. She, she has no criminal history. She thought the only other capital she's ever been in is a state capital that's open 24-7. She thought you could walk in. She, so there's a, there's a wide disparity a, a, between, you know, who Chris Ray is identifying and they want to prosecute every single person that was there to send a message. And that's what this is. It's message prosecuting. And, and, and that's mm -hmm. never a, a, an appropriate decision by a prosecutor. Wow. Jonathan, Brett, thanks for being here. Thanks for your insights. You got it. Thank you.